My name is Sophia, and my advisor was William Keeler, and today I'm going to be talking to you about centers of documentation and perspectives on the Algerian French. So as an introduction to the topic, Algeria served as France's most valuable overseas possession from its colonization in 1830 until the Algerian War of Independence between 1954 and 1962. So at independence in 1962, more than a million settlers left Algeria, mostly for southern France. Today in southern France, there are two centers of documentation that surround their heritage and their houses for resources, and their stated missions include the conservation, validation, collection, and creation and sharing of knowledge related to the material and immaterial heritage of the French from Algeria. So this year, I studied these centers in connection with the history of the French Algerians to see why they were important. The thesis I wrote is a combination of scholarly research and information I obtained at site visits from interviews and other resources. So here's an outline of what I'm going to be presenting today. Um, the two acronyms you see here concern the centers of documentations themselves. So those are their names, and I'll go over them shortly. So Algeria transitioned from Ottoman hands to French possession in 1830. By 1848, it had officially become a set of departments. In this status, which indicated an integral part of the French mainland, uh, distinguished Algeria from other French colonies and overseas territories. It also signified its economic value to France. Geopolitically, Algeria represented a gateway to Africa, enabling France to remain a global rather than a regional power. Because of its importance, the metropolitan French government encouraged immigration to the territory. Immigrants came from nations besides France from throughout, from throughout Europe, including Spain, Italy, and Malta. Eventually, the French government granted these people French citizenship. Still, they were a very heterogeneous population, both linguistically and culturally, and they were very different from the metropolitan uh, inhabitants of France. So over time, tensions between the native Algerians and the European settlers worsened. Uh, this was due in part to the fact that natives had far fewer rights than settlers, uh, including limited property and voting rights. The Algerian War for Independence broke out in 1954 when the National Liberation Front, the FLN, uh, a group of Algerian insurgents, began a series of attacks on the ruling French regime. The conflict raged on for eight years, and it is noted for its violence and brutality. Uh, it finally came to a close with the signing of the Evian Accords in the summer of 1962. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the French Algerians. Uh, with a transitional government in power in 1962 at the end of the war, many of Algeria's inhabitants were pushed out of power in favor there. So these included the Europeans of Algeria uh, and their settlers and their descendants, and they can also be referred to as the Pieds Noirs. This term, uh, it translates as black feet, and it has disputed origins. Some people say it arose from the black boots that Europeans used to wear at the time, uh, while others say it comes from the fact that many Europeans were wine growers, and when they used to stomp on their grapes, uh, their feet turned purple or black. So again, these were the Pieds Noirs. There were also the Algerian Jews in the region, and they had been present in Algeria for centuries. And finally, there were the Arki. Uh, this term refers to Muslim Algerians who fought on the side of the French during the war for independence. So many of the people in these categories fled Algeria at the end of the war. Uh, though they settled around the globe, the vast majority settled in regions in France, particularly in southern France. This region was extremely unprepared to welcome them, and they faced hardship from their arrival onward. Today, the ensemble of these people are known as the Français d'Algérie, or the French Algerians. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the CDHA. It is the first center of documentation that I visited and studied. Uh, the acronym stands for the Centre de Documentation Historique sur Algérie, so the Center of Historical Documentation on Algeria. Uh, it's located in the city of Aix-en-Provence, which is in southeastern France. It's near the Italian border in the Mediterranean Sea. And the association that uh, spurred its creation was founded in 1974. Um, it was, so the center and the association were both founded by French Algerians, and they met the needs of French Algerians. So there was a large community of these people in the city, and they wanted a space to convene and share memories. Um, and two particular women uh, thought up the idea and made the center of documentation. So here are the CDHA's missions. Um, as a center of documentation, it houses thousands of documents and artifacts in an attempt to conserve any forms of documentation from the period of French Algeria. It stresses the value of private donations, noting that even the most seemingly insignificant letters or photos are valuable. So by amassing these sorts of things, along with collecting oral histories and leading projects throughout France, 
The CDHA hopes to create and share knowledge about French Algeria and the French Algerians themselves. So almost all of the documentation is available to researchers and scholars upon request, and the public can access it as well. And then two other things they do are create this publication called Memoir Vive, which you see up there, um, and distribute it among the adherents to the association, and they also maintain a website. Um, the second center of documentation that I visited and studied is known as the CDDFA. This stands for the Centre de Documentation des Français et d'Algérie, so the Center of Documentations of the Algerian French. Um, and the association that spurred its creation was the Algerianist Circle, the Cercle Algerianiste. So this center arose in collaboration with the city of Perpignan, which is located in southwestern France. Um, the city was really a proponent and an advocate of the center from its very beginning. Um, and the association behind it has uh, been in existence since 1920. Um, and its founders wished to defend and promote an original culture, history, language, and creation in way of being born at the crossroads of the different cultures that composed Algeria. Uh, most importantly, they sought to assemble individuals who were passionate about Algeria. Um, here are the missions of the CDDFA. Uh, they further its primary mission as that of a center of documentation, and they include the safeguarding of material and immaterial heritage uh, to aid in the comprehension of French Algeria, the reinforcing of the connections between the history of France and that of French Algeria, and reflecting on the teachings of history. Um, I'd like to briefly address a third center of documentation um, that was also conceived of as a museum of the history of France and Algeria. This center of documentation was due to be constructed in the southern French city of Montpellier. However, it was never actually constructed. Um, the mayor of the city decided to uh, just bring in a project of contemporary art and put an art museum in its place. Uh, this is primarily because the project was very controversial from its beginning. Um, according to one of the people I interviewed, actually, it was decried as being a a place to glorify French Algeria for the re repatriate political lobby. So it was very controversial. Um, I think it's important to talk about memory, heritage, and past a little bit, just to clear them up. So according to many sources, including interviews I personally conducted with French Algerians, um, nostalgia is a common feeling among the individuals in the community. So we, just, we typically define nostalgia as a sentimental longing for the past, and it can be a way of looking back and being behind the times by choice for many individuals. Um, it reaffirms identities bruised by recent turmoil and challenged by new convictions with the passing of time. And it can also be seen as a potential recourse from the present. So for the French Algerians, it can be seen as recourse from an unaccommodating France, uh, from the notion that French Algeria doesn't exist anymore and can't exist anymore, and from current emotional stress that's related to their uncertain future. So shared feelings of nostalgia serve to reaffirm, reaffirm the idea of a French Algerian identity and a community, and to confirm the existence of shared memories that tie this very diverse community together. So it's also important to ask what it really means to be a French Algerian. So this distinction is not a choice. I kind of went over it at the beginning, but um, calling oneself a French Algerian doesn't really indicate a polit particular political, religious, or even cultural perspective. It's just similar to a distinction of national origin. So the act of leaving for these people when they left Algeria wasn't really a choice. Um, the French Algerians fled violence and bloodshed as Algeria sought its independence. And with few places to turn, they found themselves in the few possessions they could carry facing an unwelcoming and unprepared France. So it's perhaps these strong emotions of fear, disillusionment with present treatments and narratives of history, and unfading memories of the past that create such a strong, unfaltering sense of identity among the people with whom I spoke. So every single one of them explained that their history was different than that of the uh, metropolitan French people and that of the Algerians from Algeria. So in effect, this signaled a different heritage and a different identity for these people. So here's a summary of the conclusions I reached. Um, both of these associations, first and foremost, constitute important centers of community building, uh, facilitating the interactions of French Algerians in small community settings. Importantly, the community that these centers build allows their related associations to reach out to new generations and audiences. In this way, the centers are enabled to deviate from the uh, mensonge de l'état, so the lying of the state, and the manipulation of history that many in their community fear plague and taint their reputation. Um, so for example, in many French school textbooks, the history of French Algeria is presented in a particular way, 
and many French Algerians don't agree with this presentation. So the existence of these centers serves to allow them to uh, promote their own narratives in a way. Um, and the abundance of documentation there provides a way for the French public to obtain a more nuanced view of French Algeria than they could receive elsewhere. And then along these same lines, the centers of documentation serve to preserve the memory of the French Algerians and to deal with the question of identity in contemporary France. The documentation that these centers host in all of its forms provides physical assurance of the existence of the French Algerians. Uh, this physical proof is especially important to many French Algerians as this group of people is aging and will have disappeared within the next century. So it will be the task of their descendants and others to ensure that their unique historical experiences are not forgotten. Um, as author Fiona Barclay claims, remembrance in this context prevents the pieds noirs from laying to rest the ghosts of the past because those ghosts are what defines them. Without their haunting presence, the France d'Algerie would simply cease to exist. So finally, I'll just talk about the greater significance of, the, of these conclusions. Um, so they serve as justification for these centers' futures, despite the controversies that may surround them. So I talked a little bit about the proposed center of documentation in Montpellier, um, and how some people consider it to be a fascist museum and very politically uh, active. So these sentiments don't really surround either center today, but they could in the future. Um, and since the centers serve so many other purposes, it's sort of justification for their continued existence. Um, so perhaps most importantly, though, uh, the centers encourage discussion of French Algeria, which has long been a subject considered taboo in France. So I'd like to end with a quote. Um, Though Algeria's long-standing wish for an official French apology for colonialism still remains unfulfilled, uh, in 2012, President François Hollande took the unprecedented step of calling for an end to French and Algerian denial. Uh, the truth does not damage, he declared. It repairs. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Lauren? Uh, so how is the, uh, the history of the Conseil d'Algerie uh, presented in textbooks? So uh, there have been a lot of laws um, <laughs> dealing with this very subject. So for a long period of time, it was presented in the sort of colonialist rhetoric, uh, stressing um, like the French government's positive contributions to Algeria and to other colonies. But then in 1995, there, were more, there was a law instituted that called for more, uh, the inclusion of more perspectives. So those of the Algerian Jews, those of uh, the Pieds Noirs, and those of the Arqui. Those were all forced to be included. However, in 2013, there was another law instituted that suggested that or really rather mandated that professors and teachers stress the positive attributes of colonialism in their classrooms. So uh, it's really changed over time, but it's, it doesn't really please anyone in a sense. It's very contentious. So in total, that's Alan. Yeah, it's really interesting that you mentioned that the first center was uh, founded by two women. So I guess yes. Uh, the breakdown of the center? So, well, women are obviously very important, and mm -hmm. you could say something about that, but then the sure. second thing is um, when we're trying to think, when these centers are trying to think about Algeria, how do they compose it from a religious perspective? How do they think about it? They sure, so the main point of the centers um, is not actually to create a narrative. Their goal is really to allow others to create and compile their own narratives by providing as much documentation as possible. So they stress equality kind of among all people, women, people of all different religions. Um, they value documentation and input from anyone who wishes to uh, donate. So they stress the value of personal donations, like I mentioned before. Um, and they put everything in equal weight. So the, in, another important thing I didn't really mention is that these centers aren't exactly museums. They don't have uh, like rooms and hallways full of exhibitions with their materials. It's really just a house for resources so that people can come and compile their own narratives and do their own research to draw their own conclusions. I am almost out of time, uh, but well, go ahead. Well, no, I was just wondering what your personal interest and reasoning was for, for going on this journey, just in the sense of like, was it because, you know, was it for simply for documentation, like just to be a part of the documentation process and documenting documentation or for historical reasons? or like what's the what's your personal point in terms of like what the future is? How does this what's the bearing of this on 
Okay, I kind of understand, I think. So it's time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.